All right, folks, thanks for joining me again for my second uh, life hack in my series. Uh, today, I'm going to be looking at combining uh, the excellent diagnostic queries uh, from Glenn Berry with DBA tools. So first things first, if you haven't already heard of Glenn's uh, diagnostic queries, uh, you're missing out. This is a link to his website. He has so many great resources up there uh, on all of the queries that he's written for every SQL version uh, that's out, basically, and how you can use those queries to diagnose. Uh, to diagnose your issues. Then we have DBA tools, and we are going to look at the first two commands here, but the, there are four commands that deal with Glenn's uh, diagnostic queries in the DBA tools module. Uh, today we'll look at the in invoke and the export DBA diagnostic query commands. So first things first, invoke DBA diagnostic query. Now this is going to do exactly what it says. It's going to run one of the queries. But we don't know which one, right? So we're going to use the selection helper, which is one of my favorite parameters on this command, because what it does is it pops up this box and allows you to view all of the queries that are available for your version of SQL Server. You can then select these. If you hold Control, you can select multiples. Pressing OK, it'll output the results to your console. You can see here uh, the version information for my, my, my MS SQL 1 instance. If we know the query we want to use, we can use the query name parameter. And here I'm specifying that I just want the result uh, property to be returned. And what that'll do is it'll go out, run the tempdb data files query, and then output this is just the results. So you can see that my tempdb database has only one data file. Now that's fine, right? We're not really getting anything more than what Glenn already provides with his diagnostic queries. The power of, uh, of using PowerShell and DBA tools is when we want to run this across multiple servers. So here I'm going to run one query, which is the core counts query, across, across two SQL instances, MS SQL 1 and MS SQL 2. I'm then going to use a little bit of PowerShell magic to format the output how I want it. Uh, but basically, I'm going, to, I'm going to pipe it using the pipeline uh, into a for each object. I'm then going to use the pipeline variable uh, to save this output as the result variable and then pass it on down the pipeline. I can then use uh, the result to format my output. So if I run this, you can see I'm going to get the core counts uh, returned from those two SQL instances. And you can see here that they are both uh, Docker containers running on my laptop. So the core um, information is going to be the same for these. We can also run all of the queries at once. Uh, so here I'm doing all of the instance only uh, using this switch queries against my MS SQL 1 instance. I'm then piping it to export DBA diagnostic query and given it a path. And as you can see in the output down here, it is going through and running every one of those queries and dumping it as a CSV uh, to my output folder. Now, if I open this up, you can see that we have tons of files with all kinds of information stored in CSV format, VLF counts, IO latency, all kinds of things have been stored in this file. So this is a really good way of quickly outputting all of the information that you need to collect uh, while a problem's going on, right? Before someone wants to reboot the server or quickly get production up and running, you can grab this snapshot of what's happening right now so that you can troubleshoot and diagnose what's going on. So that was using the export DBA diagnostic query, which is included with DBA tools. We can then go one step further and introduce the Import Excel module. Now, Import Excel is a PowerShell module that allows you to manipulate Excel spreadsheets, import them into PowerShell, or export things to uh, spreadsheets without having to have Excel uh, installed. So I'm going to kick this off while I talk you through it. But basically what we're doing here is the same beginning part. We're running all of the instance only queries for MS SQL 1 and passing them into a for each object. I'm then creating this splat table that I've named, X, uh, sorry, it's a hash table that I've named Excel splat that I'll then pass into the export Excel parameter, uh, export Excel function. And all I'm doing is I'm giving the worksheet a name uh, of the SQL instance, and then each sheet within that workbook uh, will be named after the query that's uh, been run and put onto it, if that makes sense. And it should make more sense when I open it up in just a second. You can see down here that we've run 48 out of 49 queries. So whenever we're running instance-only queries, there are 49 queries for this uh, SQL Server, and it's uh, 2017 version, 49 different queries that are going to get run and executed and if we take a look at our MS SQL Excel file, as this open, you will notice that it says that we've found a problem uh, and it asks if, it's if it can be trusted. So I know it can be trusted because I made it. 
Uh, basically, what it's saying is there are some XML, XML strings that can't be processed. So I'm just going to close uh, on that, but know that there is something missing from the spreadsheet, uh, probably from a query plan or something like that. But you can see here I have a tab for each uh, each one of the queries. So I've got my version info, info, my core counts, server properties, configuration values, and many more tabs, 49 of them. So this is a really great way of uh, getting your data into an easy readable format that you can then use uh, to store or to manipulate further. You could do the same thing, and this is the exact same query, except I'm passing in a database name and I'm running database specific queries. Uh, I'll leave you to play with this one. The final thing I want to show you is, uh, is what happens if we want to run a, uh, a single query against multiple servers and output that to Excel. So let's run this. We are going to run, run the configuration values query against two instances. Again, we're using the PowerShell magic to format the output how we want. Uh, but we are going to create a configuration values spreadsheet uh, that has uh, one server per worksheet. So if we take a look at the output, and when my Excel spreadsheet opens, you can see that we have an MS SQL 1 worksheet and a MS SQL 2 worksheet. And so you could pretty easily go through your entire environment and output all of your configuration values to a spreadsheet. Hopefully that's been useful and it's got you interested in using Glenn's amazing queries with DBA tools. Uh, if you have DBA tools commands or other PowerShell uh, that you want to see me highlight on this series, please drop me a message on Twitter uh, or on YouTube and let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for joining me.